Hey everyone, welcome to The Drive Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Atia. Peter, welcome to another AMA. How are you doing? I'm doing well. That's good. Um, we got a little bit of a different vibe for this AMA. You know, in the past handful that we've done, we've kind of focused on a few big topics um, or a collection of topics under one larger topics. And so what we've been doing is in that time is just collecting a lot of questions that we think are really good, really interesting, that maybe haven't fit in one of the past AMA topics. Also, maybe that are as a result of one of the past AMA topics. And so what we did is we kind of flagged them all and we're gonna try and get through as many as we can get through here. So it's kind of gonna be a little more of an old school AMA on a variety of topics. And when we look at what we're hoping to cover, it's everything from kind of like medicine, aging, longevity, questions about your background, kind of where it led you to where you are today, um, also questions around how people should think about prioritizing all the various things in their life. We get a lot of questions where it's, you know, you, you guys talk about APOB, you talk about labs, you talk about screenings, you talk about sleep, exercise, nutrition, like all these tactics, and it can get overwhelming for people. And so we'll hopefully have a good conversation on how you think about that in your life and also with patients as people just try and sort through everything. And then if we have time, we're going to do an old school two minute drill, which is have a variety of questions, put two minutes on the clock and see if you can answer it in two minutes. The last time we did this was long ago with you and Bob, and I don't know if we answered any question in under two minutes, so <laughs> we'll see if it's any different here today. But with all that said, anything you want to add before we just get into it? <laughs> no, not at all. Let's, let's just do it. Perfect. So, But we're not on the, the two-minute clock until you tell me, not, right? This is not, okay. Yeah, these first questions aren't two-minute clock. That's much like football, end of the game, two-minute drill. So we have some time to ease into it. Um, so the first question we got is, one of the phrases that people have often heard you reference throughout the podcast in interviews with other people is this idea of medicine one, two, three point oh. Um, I also know this is part of the book you're writing, and so it's a topic and kind of a a thought experiment that you think about a lot. And we received a lot of questions about people just saying, hey, can you dive into that a little more, explain more about what you mean and why it's important for people to think about as it relates to like their own medical journey. Um, I think this would be a really good foundation for our conversation today. So maybe you can just walk people through what is that and how you think about it. So I, I don't know where the idea really came from or when it came to me, but it was sometime writing the book. So you know, which started in 2016, but I don't think it was in the first version of the book. So there's, the book has really three versions. So I kind of wrote, there's a 2016, 2017 version that, of which I don't think anything is preserved. And then there's the second version, which is sort of 2017 to 2020 of which some is preserved. And then there's the version of the book that ultimately will become the book is kind of the 2020 to 2022 writing. And I, so I, I'm positive, I nearly positive that the medicine 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 thing came from the second version of that book. And it was, and remains this idea that says, look, we, we basically exist in three different phases of medicine. Um, one of which we're, I think not quite into yet, but we're in the transition. So these transitions are far from discrete. Um, and they take in some cases, I think the transition from medicine 1.0 to 2.0 took, I don't know, I would argue from the beginning to the end, uh, 300 years. Okay, so what are they? So medicine 1.0 is when we had no idea of science. Uh, we have to kind of keep in mind, science is um, what? You know, it's such a political term at the moment that that's really unfortunate, but science is a way of thinking right? Science is not a person. Science is not an answer. Science is a process. It's a way that we look at the natural world around us. We formulate hypotheses about what explains them based on the physical principles of the universe. We design experiments to test those hypotheses and we measure the results of those experiments against the predictions of the hypotheses, and then we iterate and correct. And this was really, so, so it, it's important to understand like that we're not naturally wired to do that, one. 
So evolution didn't prepare us to do that. It had no interest in us doing that. I've written at length about this. I think I wrote a blog post on this seven or eight years ago called Why We're Not Wired to Think Scientifically. I think we should link to that um, because I go into much more detail about the time scale of evolution and the process of our thinking. So prior to the invention of this idea, nothing that existed in medicine could be tethered to science. So anytime something happened, you had to come up with an explanation. That's why we, you know, have these wonderful brains that we do. We use them to come up with explanations for things that we see happening, but none of it could be linked to scientific uh, fact or verifiable or testable hypotheses. So this is where you had sort of all sorts of crazy ideas. You know, if you were sick, it was due to bad humors and you know, it was bad spirits and bad luck and all these sorts of things. But it really, there was no sort of scientific basis for that. So that, that kind of started to change in the late 17th century with Francis Bacon. But I would argue that the full transition to Medicine 2.0 didn't actually take place until the advent of germ theory in the uh, late 19th century. So that's that's about 300 years, if I'm not, if I'm doing the math right. 16, no, 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 I'm sorry. It's about 200 years. Okay. So we've got about this 200 year period where, you know, Joseph Lister, um, all the way up to Fleming and the discovery of penicillin and antibiotics, that to me is the breakthrough of Medicine 2.0. So Medicine 2.0 comes from basically three things. One is the, the, the advent and acceptance of germ theory, um, the development of the, you know, or, or sort of the, 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 the process of scientific thinking, and then really the crown jewel of medicine 2.0, which doesn't come along until much later, is the um, statistical machinery to enable randomized control trials. Um, so again, because we're trying to be a little bit quick, I won't go into all the details and the, you know, Bernard Fisher and all of these people who played such an important role in this, but, but that's basically the trifecta of Medicine 2.0. And to be clear, Medicine 2.0 has been an amazing development, right? Like I don't think any of us would be sitting here today without Medicine 2.0. So I don't want to minimize it, but I want to acknowledge and just pass on, and the book talks more about this so we don't have to get into the great detail. Medicine 2.0 has really peaked, right? So it's, it's been very good at dealing with acute conditions. You know, you get hit by a car, you have a life-threatening infection, you suffer an MI, a myocardial infarction, and you want to make sure someone doesn't die and you want to keep somebody alive as long as possible in that, you know, acute phase. Medicine 2.0 is amazing for those things. What I argue is that we have reached the limits of Medicine 2.0's capacity and if longevity is something we are aspiring for, we need a new strategy. We need a we need as fundamental a shift as 2.0 was from 1.0, and that is to 3.0. And 3.0 is basically predicated on evidence-informed as opposed to evidence-based guidelines. It is predicated on absurdly early preventative measures for chronic conditions, which are now the dominant source of morbidity and mortality. It's no longer acute conditions. And it has to be highly personalized. So I'll stop there because, again, I could probably spend the hour now talking about that. But I think people now get the sense of what this what this is. And I'm arguing that we're not, of course, yet in Medicine 3.0, but we're now in that transition. And what I'm arguing is we should be accelerating that. Yeah. And so it's interesting, right? Because your medicine 3.0 isn't necessarily, you know, people are going to live forever. It's more so just a shift to the three things, like you said, which is personalized medicine, early prevention, and evidence informed. Have you ever thought about what medicine 4.0 looks like? Is that even on your radar? Or is it the more of the focus is how do we make this huge shift to 3.0, which is going to create so much benefit for people? Yeah, I haven't, I, I don't think I have enough clarity as to what medicine 4.0 would look like yet versus things that I don't think I will experience in my lifetime that will just be a part of medicine 3.0, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And when you think about that transition, which you mentioned more slowly and now, do you have an idea of 
how far out you think medicine 3.0 is not necessarily at the individual level so like you know there's always a difference when people could access it yeah. versus the standard of care do you have an idea or any rough idea on when that turn to the standard of care becomes no i think it's too soon to say it's really going to depend on how quickly people adopt um and and sort of you know basically demand change uh, and i don't think that's possible to predict right um let's use an example that's you know, completely different, but, but I think if you could go back in a time machine, you wouldn't know, right? So if you went back in a time machine to 1850, slavery is the law of the land. The, the country is completely segregated. I don't think anybody could have reasonably predicted the events of the 1860s and the events of the 1960s, right? Which were two very important pillars in time as it pertained to slavery and ultimately segregation. Um, and these, in other words, you, you, you just couldn't have predicted that even though those are, those are both very social changes. Um, now maybe there's a historian that will argue, no, it was crystal clear in 1850 that we were, you know, 15 years away from a civil war and a hundred years away from uh, a civil revolution, but but I, I don't believe that, and I, I certainly don't think we can do the same here. Also, on the book piece, uh, I know you've been working on the book for a long time, because I've known you during that stretch, but I wasn't necessarily aware of the 2016 to 2017 initial book that nothing made it really into the final copy. Not, not nothing, all of it went straight into the wastebasket. So, so for everyone who's been anxious, kind of banging at the door, good thing we waited a little bit to, uh, to get that out, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. So the next set of questions we receive in one form or another, kind of almost weekly, which is even people who followed you for a while and people who are kind of newer to following you, they often will ask a variety of questions. They either might be in school, med school, um, really interested in longevity, might be doctors, and they're really trying to understand like where your knowledge on this came from and how you've put into practice what you're trying to do with your patients in Medicine 3.0. Because it seems like from knowing you, a lot of what you do with your patients didn't necessarily come from what you learned in med school and or what you did in residency. Um, and so I think what might be helpful to people is just if you want to give people a walkthrough of like your background and kind of how it's led to where you are today, which is ultimately practicing medicine 3.0 with your patients. Thank you for listening to today's sneak peek AMA episode of The Drive. If you're interested in hearing the complete version of this AMA, you'll want to become a member. We created the membership program to bring you more in-depth exclusive content without relying on paid ads. Membership benefits are many, and beyond the complete episodes of the AMA each month, they include the following. Ridiculously comprehensive podcast show notes that detail every topic, paper, person, and thing we discuss on each episode of The Drive. Access to our private podcast feed. The Qualies, which are a super short podcast, typically less than five minutes, released every Tuesday through Friday, which highlight the best questions, topics, and tactics discussed on previous episodes of The Drive. This is particularly important for those of you who haven't heard all of the back episodes. It becomes a great way to go back and filter and decide which ones you want to listen to in detail. Really steep discount codes for products I use and believe in, but for which I don't get paid to endorse and benefits that we continue to add over time. If you want to learn more and access these member-only benefits, head over to peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe. Lastly, if you're already a member, but you're hearing this, it means you haven't downloaded our member-only podcast feed where you can get the full access to the AMA and you don't have to listen to this. You can download that at peteratiamd.com forward slash members. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all with the ID Peter Atia MD. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast player you listen on. 
This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. Mm-hmm.